people that are looking for inspiration. We're looking for something that can capture the imagination of Zimbabwe. Traveling through South Africa, meeting the citizens of Zimbabwe is a very inspiring journey. And I think it is the discovery of the tenacity that Zimbabweans and South Africa have when you start to consider the challenges that they face being here. I mean, for one, being away from home and your family uh, for, for such a long time uh, is a hard thing to do. But the fact that they go through that and they, they face it, and for me, it's just been inspiring to see how hard Zimbabweans in South Africa work and more importantly, how they long for home, to be at home, how they long to do what they do here, to do it at home, to, to work hard for their own country. And that has been both heartbreaking and inspiring at the same time. The contribution of students that are outside Zimbabwe is extremely important to the students and the young people that are inside Zimbabwe because the difference is that this, the young people that are inside Zimbabwe are living the reality of the situation on the ground. They live the reality of corrupt, runaway corruption. They live the reality of injustice. They live the reality you know, of poverty. And I was talking to some students a few days ago answering the same question of how students outside Zimbabwe can help those that are inside Zimbabwe. And I think part of it is the solidarity. Part of it is the reconnection. And one of the big things that's taking place with this flag movement, and indeed the many other movements that are forming around the time that we're in in Zimbabwe, is the solidarity, is the standing together, is the sharing of issues. The fact that what you are going through is something that even if I'm not going through it, I empathize with it. It's my hope that the students, Zimbabwean students that are outside the borders of Zimbabwe can start to identify with what the young people in Zimbabwe go through, band together, talk about it on social media together. If the young people in Zimbabwe start something that is a protest, sometimes the voice that speaks to the international scene louder than the one that's in Zimbabwe is the one that's outside. So you stand with them, you be their representative, you approach the international media, blow up the story wide, send the story to the four corners of the earth on their behalf. That's how we do this. We, we do what we can with what we have where we are. It was me, a three-year-old, and my mother, and I've never been so scared in my life. And I felt like I couldn't do anything because I was so afraid. So I sat in the back and I just kept quiet. And I don't want to be afraid anymore. I don't want a government and a system that instead of helping people whose car broke down, chooses to point a gun at them and intimidate them into silence. I don't want a government where people have to queue for days to get money. And I don't want a government and I don't want a country where I, don't, I can't even think of going back home to work because it's not a possibility because there are no jobs. Or he'd worked for, for 30 years, was worth 1,500 rand. And I saw, I saw his last days. It's painful to see somebody you look up to go through that. And that's why I speak of that, because I think there's other, a whole lot of millions of Zimbabweans that have gone through the same thing. Where <coughs> in 2008, all their pensions just got taken away because of bad management. Okay. I feel like we, can, we, can, we need to stop being scared. But when I've encountered people that do not see value uh, in the movement or in the protest, it obviously it, it makes you think about what they hope for uh, as a way of change. But I, I, I have faith in the process of a movement growing organically, growing step by step and day by day. Because when you look at where we started, I started off as one person making a video. And when you look at the journey, there are a lot of people that have been skeptical about it, that eventually have then said, you know what, I'm going to stand for it. I'm going to stand for something. But it's okay. And I think it's part of what we need in building a Zimbabwe that works. 
Not everybody should be forced to believe in something. There are people that are supposed to criticize. There are people that are supposed to question. And maybe at some point when they get an understanding, they come on board. But even if they never do come on board, their views for why they don't come on board are valuable to me. They are valuable to us in our movement. Because if, only, if, oh, if we only ever band together because we agree, we're going to find ourselves having a problem because no one sees some of the dangers that other people can see. I would, however, be, a, be also want to say to those very people that say it doesn't translate into a practical way, way of bringing change to Zimbabwe, that even if this doesn't translate into a practical way of bringing change in Zimbabwe, you still have a duty to find something or to start something that is going to bring that practical change. We, I have done what I can. The people that have joined me have also done what they, what they can. What shall you do? as well to bring the practical change that uh, you know you are talking about and again bear in mind we began online and our journey has taken us through places where we have sat the governor of the reserve bank down with over 300 citizens and had a public debate concerning bond notes that for me is already beginning to become practical on the ground we've gone from there and together with other movements and other citizens called a stay away as a protest to our government it shook them and it made them see that we're serious. So it's step by step. It can't happen in two months. We've walked a journey of 36 years. It might take us longer than two months. But if there is a better way, then whoever sees a better way owes it even to me who might not be doing it so well to get on with it. And if it is a better way, I will gladly ditch what I'm doing and jump onto that. I want to always be a citizen because this, from here, I can, I can best articulate the issues because I live them every day. It's important that you and I are not rushed. It is true that the Zimbabwean government has silenced people over the years and has intimidated people into not speaking up concerning the things that concern them and concerning their nation. And this tactic has continued to be used even up to now. I've seen it in the last few weeks and months when we've been arrested and we've been intimidated. And even because people were, have been involved on social media, you've seen the government and arms of government issue statements that are ridiculous when they say to people, you're not allowed to you know, send this kind of information uh, you know, via, say, WhatsApp or via Facebook uh, you know, or Twitter. That's, that is a freedom and is a right that is afforded me in my very own own constitution but to be able to overcome intimidation tactics at least from where I stand one of the ways to do it is to have more and more voices speak up we cannot continue to allow one person or lone voices to speak people must own their own movement they must own their own desire for change and so the best way to overcome the intimidation of one person is for 20 people to speak up when one person has, is at the receiving end of intimidation. So that's why for me continued when people ask me, so what's next? What's next is that the way that you and I got on board in terms of speaking up in this movement is the way that we must invite more and more people on board. More and more people have to believe that this is the way in which our country is going to be changed. So we've started well, we've continued well but going forward one of the things that still remains to be done is to get more and more people to stand up and speak up about the injustice that they have seen in their space the corruption that they've seen in their space and when we do that we have a stronger force as citizens because that's all we have we don't have guns we don't have systems of justice sometimes on our side what we have is each other and I saw that the day that I came out of court, I saw thousands of people who suddenly realized that what we have really is, is each other in terms of fighting against a system that won't let us uh, you know, contribute towards the building of our own nation. For me, the message to them is very clear. The citizenry has risen up and is giving a chance to you to be able to step up and to be able to say, hey, can we paint a picture together of a future that we deserve? And I'm tired of that system. I'm tired of my feelings not being taken into consideration. I'm tired of a government and a system and a culture that has shown over and over again that it doesn't care about its citizens. And I'm tired of being afraid. And I'm standing here today and I'm saying, I'm not afraid anymore.